Today is Thursday, August 4th. I've been on the road for well over 40 days now, and I suppose that the rhythm of the road has completely overtaken me. Every morning I wake up in a different location and perform the normal routines of the ordinary motorcyclist camping in places like this one. I'm on Kettle River. Kettle River is a big, beautiful flowing river here in the eastern part of Washington State. And I crossed the border back into the United States last night near Danville. It's a small border crossing. And the border crossing guard there asked me why I chose that particular border. And I told him it's because I like to travel the back roads. He seemed to agree with me. I couldn't stop riding yesterday. It was a beautiful day and the roads were mine. Whether they were paved or whether they were dirt, I ended up on some more back roads as the sun was going down, riding gravel in this part of the country, then a late after dark ride over Sherman Pass. And then it dropped down to where I'm at now. I got into this campsite well after dark and had what probably ranks as the simplest dinner of all, some beef jerky and Pringles. And now I'm awake early under overcast skies, looking at the river glide by, thinking where this ride might flow today. I don't know yet. I haven't looked at the map. I haven't decided which direction I want to go. And it doesn't really matter either because I have the freedom to travel. I have the freedom to float like the river and go with the wind. Like I said, the rhythm of the road has kind of overtaken me at this point. As long as I keep heading in a generally southern direction, why I suppose this trip will get to wherever it needs to go, which is back home in Arizona for me. It's a slow moving ritual. It almost feels like every day is a Sunday. It doesn't take me a long time to get my things ready, but it takes longer than it used to because I've slowed down a little bit and accept the fact that that's okay. That it's nice to spend a little time in a place like this in the morning and gather my things together and prepare for the day. The least of my worries is deciding what to wear. Do I wear the black t-shirt or the gray one? Hmm. I suppose you could call me old fashioned or not with the times or whatever, but this new system of booking and reserving campsites is just a, a little bit different than the way I remember and not quite what I'm used to. I came into this campsite last night at about 10 p.m. after dark. And I thought I would be able to fill out the little envelope and put my money into it and have my campsite in a matter of minutes. But that's not what happened. I came to this kiosk by the light from my cell phone, found out that there was a QR code that I had to scan. And the sign says that if you are unable to do that, that you should call. Of course, the office was closed. And so I proceeded to try to find a way to scan this QR code in the dark. I ended up using a lighter to illuminate the scene and my phone to scan the QR code, which indeed brought me to a website. I had one bar of service on my phone, so it took a while. And when I got to the website, I had to fill out my name and address and contact information and all of those things. And then, of course, they have to verify my email address. And so I had to check and wait for their email to get in my inbox so that I could respond so that they knew that it is indeed me and this is my email address and all of that accomplished. I went back to the website then I had to enter my credit card number and of course for whatever reason it didn't automatically appear in my phone and so once again I got the lighter out and searched for the credit card in my wallet and typed in all the numbers. All of this in the dark mind you while I was hungry and hadn't even set up camp yet. And it took about a half an hour to do all this nonsense before I was able to finally and officially proclaim myself as the owner of spot number four for one night. And all of this is just to say that 
this modern way of doing things with technology and cell phones and QR codes and reservations isn't any easier for someone like me. I much prefer the old way. Put your money in the envelope and put it in the box. But that's not the way it is anymore. I guess there's too many people out looking for campsites or too many people making programs and QR codes for people who are looking for campsites. It's kind of like these two bridges going over the river here. There's the old way of doing things and the new way. The new ways are modern and efficient with technology, streamlined. In some ways, I kind of like the old ways of doing things. It reminds me of a time when things were just a little bit easier, when you could roll up to a campsite in the middle of the night and just fill out the paperwork and be done with it. I'm not sure that the, the modern ways of change through technology have necessarily improved things. Maybe they're just a, a necessary part of managing the world that we live in today or providing IT workers with jobs. So are you headed that way now? Or? I haven't even really looked at the map I yet. Know, that's, the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's the joy of it. All right, man. Well, safe journey, safe, happy trails, I guess they say. All right. Thanks. <laughs> All right, bye. I only made it about five minutes down the road to this little town, Kettle River, before I was lured into the coffee company for a breakfast burrito and a latte. Who wants to sit around the campground cooking breakfast when you can get a great meal just a few miles down the road, right? So I'm in Kettle Falls right now and I have to go south, but I might actually head north. It's not the right direction, but it sounds like fun and it would be a chance to ride along next to the Columbia River. So maybe a trip from Kettle Falls up to Northport and back to Kettle Falls. And then this afternoon I'll head south down to Inchelium where I know there's a little ferry that goes across the river there. I just realized that I'm on the wrong road. My detour has turned into a detour within a detour. I was distracted by cameras and GoPros and things like that and didn't realize that I missed my turn some five or 10 miles back. So let's get back on the right track. I got to see a logging truck lumbering down the road. That's a good one. Lumbering down the road. Have you ever seen a logging truck lumbering down the road in slow motion? Now that's one of those things you can check off your bucket list. This journey had meaning and it had purpose. I don't think it gets much better than this. Like I'm on a back roads journey of delight, breezing away into Joyland. Look at how this sinuous stretch of pavement curves like a serpent next to the undulating liquidity of the river. Sharp angular rock face on the left in contrast to the smooth liquid flow of the Columbia. What a road, a fantastic road. Pure motorcycling delight, an expression of freedom as if there were no other, as if this were the only freedom, the original freedom, man's inborn ability and desire to ride on two wheels with an internal combustion engine between his legs, firing in perfect boxer synchronicity, harmony of valves and pistons. Thank you, motorcycle gods, for this gift of a road. I have to pause and catch my breath. It literally takes my breath away. Riding next to the Columbia River, on this ribbon of asphalt that just twist and turned and went up and down and next to the river and a view and then the rocks and the woods. Perfection. I just had to share that with you guys. What a moment. Here's the Flat Creek School. This old red clapboard schoolhouse with a copper roof and a, a bell. It's well taken care of. Well, if you're ever in this area, you're on the same road that I took once upon a time. 
back in the year 2022, when the world was much different than it is today. I'm standing here high above the mighty Columbia River down below on this beautiful, hot, sunny August afternoon after having ridden one of the most enjoyable rides that I've taken on this entire trip. And the only reason I discovered this road was because I took it, not because it's going in the right direction. In fact, I'm heading towards Canada when I should be heading further south back to my home in Arizona. But I took this road nonetheless because it looked like a, a good line on the map. I'm thankful for the freedom to be able to meander and wander like this on a trip like this without the imposition of deadlines or schedules or a group of other people that have opinions other than my own on how fast to ride and where to go and when to stop. To me, this is kind of the ultimate freedom of motorcycling to be on a trip like this. And I'm, deeply grateful for it. And that's why I stopped here high above the Columbia to preserve this magical moment in time in this August afternoon. Because I know that one day in the not too distant future, I will unpack all of this footage, every digital pixel, and in the process, it will bring joy to my heart. And I hope it brings joy to yours. Well, it happened, and it happened again. My drone just crashed into a tree over here. It appears to have crashed somewhere around here. There it is, my wounded bird. It's not stuck in the tree. It's sitting here beeping like it should. I'm gonna turn it off. There we go, little bird. Are you gonna be okay? Let's find out if you can still fly. You can notice that these, uh, propellers have seen better days. They're very chipped up. This one has a crack in it. It's battered and abused, but still refuse to give up. Much like myself or my bike. Both of us battered and abused by the ravage of the journey, but refusing to give up. We must go on. Aha. Lovely. She's still flying. No harm done. We were able to get that last shot that completes our story and makes it look like a romantic, problem-free ride down the road. And the other thing that just happened, my zipper here broke and now my camera bag won't zip up. And that's really unfortunate. So I have this rain cover down here that I'll be able to pull out and put over it so nothing will fall out of it. And then the straps will go across the top, but it's just uh, one more thing to do every time I wanna get my drone out or my other camera. Now we're back on the sinuous serpent before we cross the bridge over to Northport. Those are some hard earned road calluses. You don't get calluses like this just every day. Is that the right word, calluses? What's the plural of callus? Is it cali? Like cactus and cacti? Do I have cali on my hands? Now I'm traveling down the other side of the river heading south on the eastern shore of the Columbia River. This to me is somehow a perfect metaphor or example of this entire journey, kind of the absurdity of it all, just wandering around. If we get the opportunity to do so, we're gonna pass a very long truck. 
in slow motion. That's the power of the 1200 GS. It has exceedingly good slow motion passing abilities. Now I'm back in Kettle Falls once again. I've come full circle in this small journey of the day and, it's, and yet how much we have seen. Well, here's a sign of the times if there ever was one. It says I miss complaining about the cold. Now I'm walking down this porch, checking out all of the antiques for sale. I have something of a confession to make, and that is that I suppose I've always had some sort of a, a farmhouse fetish, a lifelong attraction to the things that you might have found in a farmhouse from the turn of the century or the, the 1930s, the Dust Bowl, the Great Depression. And perhaps that's because I spent part of my formative child years growing up in a proper farmhouse in rural West Michigan on a blueberry farm and so I've always been attracted to these kinds of roadside antique stores and this is one of the finest that I've seen up here. So now I'm on the west side of the Columbia River heading south toward a place called Inshallan. Because if memory serves me correctly, there's a little ferry that goes across the river here. All right, I'm about ready to board this little ferry. It goes across the Columbia River here, much, much, much smaller than the Northern Sea Wolf that we took last week from Port Hardy to Bella Coola. It's always nice to throw a little ferry trip into the mix on a motorcycle ride. This one's particularly enjoyable because it only takes about 10 minutes to get to the other side of the Columbia River here, so it's not very long. And you're in the open air. The vehicle deck is the main deck of the vehicle. There's nowhere to put your, your vehicle down below, so you basically just sit on your motorcycle and ride across the river. And here we are now on the other side of the, the Columbia, on the eastern side of the Columbia River. something different. As you have seen, I'm in a very different rural agricultural area. It's very beautiful. It's called the Palouse. Seven o'clock. It's going to get dark soon. I don't want to have a repeat of last night where I was rolling into my campsite. After dark, I decided to get and I found a motel. Looks like a lovely little place and he said he's going to come by in a couple minutes and give me a small room. That's what he had available. He said a small room. I said that would be just fine. I'm going to go freshen up, charge the batteries get a bite to eat, check into my motel here at the Davenport. Ooh. 